As an instructional designer, it's very beneficial to learn Adobe Illustrator when you're building out your e-learning. And so today I'm gonna to go over the basic features that I use and the tools, uh, just the functions I use to go about building my e-learning and how to make them clean and professional using vector assets. All right, so we're gonna to go to freepick.com and we're gonna look for a vector asset. So I'm going to look around and find something and I found this, I'm gonna click on it and then we're gonna download the vector file or the vector package. And once you download, it's going to be a zip file on your downloads folder. And then we're going to open the downloads folder and we need to extract the zip file. Right click it and extract the folder. You can also move the folder to your project folder. And then now once you extract it, you're going to have a new folder. You're going to click on that. And then we're going to open the AI file. Double click on it. The EPS file also opens in Illustrator, but if there is an AI file, you'll open that. Otherwise, you open the EPS file. Just click OK. Uh, if you get these pop-ups, just go ahead and just close them. Now you have your vector file. If we jump to Storyline, um, just going to show you that we're going to have a blank screen. I adjusted the slide dimensions to be widescreen, made it 1280 by 720. And in Illustrator, it's a good idea to adjust your artboard or your canvas to be the same size. So click on the artboard, which I just clicked. And on the Properties tab, if you don't see Properties, go to Window and then click on Properties. And as you click the artboard, you can adjust the properties dimensions. I'm changing it to 1280 by 720. Now we have the exact dimensions. I'm going to drag it over to the artboard and kind of stretch it out a little bit. And obviously because the proportions are different, it's going to be, there's going to be some empty spaces and we'll go ahead and adjust that soon. Let's go to the actual tool. This is called the selection tool. Like what the name says, you can select objects. Then we have the direct selection tool. This is where you can uh, select individual objects that are not grouped together and I'll explain and I'll go over how those two are different. And if you can click on learn more, uh, there are more tutorials on that through Adobe. So I'm going to use the direct selection tool and click on the background. And you notice that we collect, selected the background and I'm going to just click on the corners to stretch out the rest of the background color. Obviously there's uh, faster ways to do that. Uh, through other tools, but using the direct selection tool, you can grab the corners because it is it is a vector file. You can grab the corners and stretch them out. You can change the background. Just click on the background and then go to the color palette or to the color tool or the color section and change the colors around. If you want to change the elements here, you just use your direct selection tool, click on it. You can select multiple parts by holding shift if you want to. But here I selected the rectangle. I'm thinking because we changed the background to green, we can change it to something else. I'm using the eyedropper tool to select the green from the background And I'm going to darken it a little bit because obviously we don't want it to be the same exact color as the background. And using a direct selection, if you click away from the background, the highlighted section is gone. Now we could click on the other tabs or the other elements and use the eyedropper to change the color. 
or you can sample the colors that you already have on screen. Here, I'm using the direct selection tool and the eyedropper to sample the colors. Notice how if I grab this regular selection tool and move the object around, the entire vector file or vector group gets moved. That's why we use the direct selection tool to just move things individually. And you have more, um, uh, all right, we're going to change the back legs of this desk. You can hold shift and select more than one element using the direct selection tool. And I'm going to use the eyedropper to sample one of the colors that we already have and move away and select outside of the canvas to see what it looks like. Say for example, you only have three subtopics and we don't have four subtopics or we need to get rid of one of the subtopics. What you do is click on the direct selection tool and you can individually select them and hold shift to remove them one by one. Later, I'm going to show you a faster way to do that. But this is how you remove elements that you don't want in the vector file that you downloaded. Okay, soon I'm going to show you another way to remove these, which is a little faster. We need to modify the line here. You can try to adjust the lines by clicking on the corners and shrinking them. But for this example, we're just going to go ahead and remove it. To zoom in, you can use the magnifying glass. Click using the left mouse button. If you want to zoom out, hold alt and click the mouse button. Or you could do control plus or control minus. To zoom in, just use the magnifying glass and click using the left mouse buttons. If you want to zoom out, hold Alt and click on the mouse button. Use the direct selection tool and just select the line, the entire line here. And you can just delete. We could zoom back out by clicking on the magnifying glass and hitting Alt and clicking. We just talked about how to remove elements by using the direct selection tool. Now, there's another way to remove elements without using the direct selection tool, without clicking every little item. Click on the selection tool. Right now, if we select it, we get all of the elements combined. But what we're going to do is click on one of the groups or one of the elements, double click, and now you've just entered into a certain group. And it's still dragging everything along. We're going to double click again. Now what we have is we can move just this section here. We're going to double click one more time. And now we can get into the individual elements of that particular group. You could do that for these as well. Now to go back, just click on the back arrow and you'll notice now you're selecting everything again when you move them. That's going to come in handy soon, but for now, let's learn how to export. Go to window. Go to Asset Export, make sure that's checked, and make sure your panel is showing. So click on it, drag it over, and now you have that particular uh, vector file that you can export. One thing to note is when you drag it over, hold Alt so that you make sure that all of the elements is shown or exported as one PNG file and not separated individually. Now click export, find the folder that you want to export and then select folder. 
Now go find the folder or the directory that you exported it to and we'll take a look. And there we have it. Let's go to storyline and import it in to see what it looks like. Keep in mind, this is not the final product. We don't want to be dragging in entire PNG files with all of the elements and all of the text. In the final version, we're going to have each element separated by its own PNG files. And the text is going to be redone within Storyline. One thing I like to do when I import in vector assets is make a copy of it within the canvas just in case I need to go back and redo anything. So you do control C, select everything and then do a control V. And if you hold the mouse button and move the cursor around, you drag the entire canvas so that you could move it around and focus on particular sections. Also to zoom in and zoom out, you click on the magnifying tool or you could do control plus or control minus, but click on the uh, magnifying tool and then you just click on it to zoom in. To edit the text, go to the direct selection tool and then just double click on the text. And then just highlight it and change the text. And you will notice that the text right now has like a pink rectangular fill. That's because we have uh, we don't have the font that this vector file used. So you could just change the font to something else and we'll just change it to Arial. You can do the same thing for this one. Just double click on it, change the text. Right here, let me fix the typo here. Double click, change the text. You change it to whatever you want. But later we're gonna actually remove these and then create the text within storyline itself. But here just we're demonstrating how to change the text around. Then we'll change the font here. Just pick any font you want. Now to get to the direct selection tool, you can also hit a on your keyboard and it will take you to the direct selection tool without having to go all the way over there and click on it. And here I'm just changing the text around just to demonstrate how text is uh, changed within Illustrator. And eventually we need to individually export these elements. So for example, we just want the subtopic one element. This is what we can do. We don't want subtopic two. We don't want subtopic three. Go to the selection tool double click on it and right now we want to double click some more and we'll do it one more time and now we have the section that we can highlight if you try to drag it over to the asset export section it won't allow you to do that because we're inside a grouping we need to get out of this group. We're going to cut it and then get out of all of these groupings. And then we'll do a paste in place. Now what we could do is select these elements, select all the elements that we want to export and drag it over. Another way that you can go about doing this. You can select all of this, including the background and unselect the background by holding shift and then click on it. Now we just have just that element that we can export. One thing to know, if you drag it over without hitting alt, it's going to try to separate every single element within that group. So as you're dragging over, hold alt. And now it's just combined or it's one big PNG instead of the separate files. Export it. And you'll notice the element is in your folder. Let's get rid of this. And let's drag that element over. And for most cases, 
You don't want to bring in text from Illustrator. You want to recreate this within Storyline. This is just a sample of how we can export elements and drag it in to Storyline. Here, I'm deleting all of those texts. And then we're going to export just that element without the text. Dragging it over, click Export, select the folder. Let's delete that and drag that graphic in. Now, we have it without the text, and then we can recreate it in Storyline by in inserting a text. In most cases, we don't want to bring in a giant PNG file with all of these elements. What we want to do is separate each element by its own PNG file. Just like what we just did. We want to bring the desk in as its own PNG and all three elements as their own PNG. So let's separate the desk. Double click on the desk, double click a few more until only the desk is movable. And then again, cut, get it out of all of those groupings and then let's paste in place. Or you could just paste it. Before we do anything else, let's, let's group this and you could just group it by doing control G. That way, when you select it, you're not selecting each individual element. You're selecting this entire desk group. Online examination, that text is not going to apply to us. So we'll go ahead and edit it using the direct selection tool. Double click on it, change the text. Here we'll call it remote. Maybe work etiquette. And then let's change the font since we don't have that font there. Let's call it Arial. Arial Black. And then adjust the paragraph uh, alignment. Rearrange it. Do that for this one. Actually, we'll go ahead and just remove it. And then let's, let's make the icon bigger. Instead of using the direct selection tool, let's use the selection tool and then double click inside the group and click on it and stretch it out. Hold shift. And there you go. And then you can do that for the other elements. If you don't want that cactus, you could double click on it, double click on it, get rid of it or adjust the colors. Now let's drag that over and then hold alt, let go, and then let's export it, select folder, check your folder and see if it's there. There it is, drag it over and then resize it if necessary and we have our individual elements. You can also drag the background over, drag it over, click export and then drop it in Storyline, or you could just recreate it in Storyline. It's just a solid color. And then move that back, send it to back. There we go. Here I am just duplicating these elements just to get an idea of what the layout looks like. Obviously we're gonna replace those with actual elements the real icons. What I did here was I just pasted in a random branding color palette. I just screenshotted it and brought it over. Yours will look different. What I like to do is just uh, bring in or import in the branding colors for your project or your company. By doing this, you can sample those colors so that your graphics have similar branding colors. And notice here, I just changed the background, selected it, and then sampled it from the palette here. You can change it to any color you like. So I'll take the sample colors like this one here. Maybe I'll use the direct selection tool. Maybe we don't want uh, to be orange, maybe we want it to be. Nope, we don't want that. Nope. Just whatever branding color that you have. 
and I'll sample it from here. Now, one more big thing that I like to, or I do frequently is I go to, no, flat icon, flat icon.com. And here is where I find relevant icons for my project. For example, I typed in learning and there's all these icons that you can use to import it into illustrator. And a disclaimer, I think the SVG option is only for the paid subscribers or the paid subscriptions. So you want to just use the PNG and when you use the PNG, you can't modify the colors. So that's one thing uh, that is different. If you're going to use the PNG, you can't go to illustrator and start modifying colors. I go to flaticon.com and I look for subtopics. Uh, whatever subtopic you have, I look for icons related to that. And so I'm going to pick one just randomly. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to download the SVG file. All right. I'm going to download the SVG file. And then on your downloads, that should have been, that should not be this icon. But on your downloads, you have your SVG file. And you are going to drag it over. It's going to open a new tab. Just highlight all of it. Go back to your original tab and paste it. Hold shift. And I'm going to replace that. So how am I going to replace that? I go to the selection tool. Oh, this one we didn't group, so let's just delete all this. There we go. And here I'm resizing, and just because the colors seem a little off, I'm going to go back and change all the colors around so it's more consistent. Now using the same methods, we can look for more icons in flaticon.com. Again, if you don't have the subscription, uh, you will need to just download the PNG and then not modify the colors, but just resize the image as a PNG file. And so for this section, I am just adding in more SVGs. Again, if you don't have the subscription, you can't modify the SVG files. You have to download the PNG files and just resize the PNG without being able to modify the colors of these icons. Copy it. Go back to your uh, your uh, tab. Paste it. Hold shift. And you likely want to change the colors around for this one. Technically, these two styles don't really work well. When you have the lined, outlined version of the icon, this one you don't. So I would, I would find another one. If you ever come across an icon where if you shrink the file, it just... Uh, it changes the look of the icon. Do this. Select the picture, click on, select the, the vector file, go to object, go to expand, and go to fill and stroke and click OK. Now when you shrink it, it shouldn't affect the, the line weights and it, it shouldn't affect the, the icon at all, except for you to be able to shrink it. What you can do is you can also change the colors around, right? I would change that yellow. Into this color, maybe change this blue to that one. Okay. 
now you can uh, make it bigger. You can hold shift, highlight all of these, drag it over to your asset export, export it. Now go to storyline. Let's remove those elements and then go to your directory where you exported it and drag it over. And I forgot to change the, the colors on this one. So we're going to go ahead and remove it later. And let's remove these ones into old colors. And let's drag in the new colors. We're going to export the other elements again, highlight all of the selections, drag it over and then hold alt so that you're not individually separating each graphic. And in the asset export panel, select all of them and then click export. Now go back to storyline, find your folder, start dragging in the items. Make sure we put the, the levels or the layers appropriately so that the background is in the bottom and all the elements are on top of that. Maybe make it bigger so that the text fits a bit more. Here, the, the entire slide is going to be driven by these icons or these elements. And then you have the, the text that here, text here that represents these subsections. Obviously you're going to change the icon for this one. Here's another thing that we can go over. You notice here that the, you can say, Hey, we can maybe make this a little longer. And if we do that here, it's going to look funny. So we could go back to illustrator and we can make this side longer. One way you could go about doing this is this part. Let's, you know what? Let's just move that for now. It's easier to, you can lock it, but I don't want to confuse you guys. Move it here for now. I'm going to use my direct selection tool. I'm going to select just the part that won't get warped. If I, the parts that won't get warped, if I extend it, for example, if I decided to do maybe here and then drag, Oh, I guess that does work. I guess you could have done that, but I'm going to drag it from here and then grab the end, hold shift do that. So I'm going to use my direct selection tool, drag it over, click on the edge, hold shift and drag it to the right. There we go. Now we're going to go here and then select it. Technically, since we adjusted the same image from earlier, we could export these as well and it would be the same thing. But to demonstrate how to export, I'm going to drag it over, hold alt and you have that. I'm going to export, select folder, go back to storyline, delete that. Go to our assets. Now you'll have to do that for the other ones as well. Hold shift. And now you have a much longer area to work with to have your text. And if the text here kind of gets darkened by the shade, you can go ahead and just remove it in illustrator. If it's becoming something that, uh, that it impacts the text, you could just, you got to delete it or change the color. Then I would add the text here. If there's not enough room. I wouldn't bother with. If there's not enough room creating a header and a content text, just keep everything as one font size and fill in the content for that subtopic. Adjust the font as necessary. I would say don't make it any smaller than 14 point font. And that's how I use illustrator to modify my 
modify the assets and bring it into storyline. And obviously you can add your entr entrance anim animations, but prim it's primarily these two, the direct selection tool, the direct selection tool, and then the selection tool and the eyedropper. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away.